All right, well, if you've seen some of my past videos, you may have noticed I'm not the biggest fan of bluefish. And the reasoning behind that is simple. It's their teeth. Over the years, bluefish have cost me probably hundreds of dollars worth of tackle. And even the small little snapper blues still have razor sharp teeth that will absolutely slice through soft plastics and fluorocarbon leaders. I've had bluefish completely break me off on an 80 pound fluorocarbon leader. These teeth are no joke, man. And there goes my soft plastic. Hopefully my mono leader is not shred. Looks like I got them pretty, jeez, dude, relax. These fish are freaking scary. Oh, look how it just whipped the bunker like that. Oh my God, dude. These fish are not to be messed with, man. I think people underestimate how ferocious bluefish really are. Oh, bluefish, dude. Ah, oh, man. That stinks. People are like, oh, why don't you like bluefish? That's why. <laughs> that is why I don't like bluefish. And not to mention, these fish can get pretty damn big. I've caught some close to the 40 inch range, and when you pair their sharp teeth with that sheer size, they can be pretty scary to handle sometimes. Oh, oh, oh God. That's a scary fish, dude. It's a freaking tank of a bluefish. That's a freaking big bluefish right there, man. Holy, that's a scary fish when they get this big. I often call these fish the piranhas of Rhode Island, and that's not just because of their teeth either. When these fish get fired up in a feeding frenzy, they go insane. They're jumping around all over the place, and when you hook one, they can be a little scary to handle when they're going crazy like that. Buddy, easy, easy, easy. This guy is really fired up. Oh God, he almost jumped in the boat. Yeah, another blue. Hey buddy, this isn't gonna be fun. He just threw up a ton of, I don't know if you can see it, floating ton of sand eels. So I know what they're eating. On the plus side though, these are some of the hardest fighting fish you can find in Rhode Island. You'll see some crazy topwater blowups from them, and if you finally hook into a big one, the fight can be an absolute blast. I'll always enjoy fighting a bluefish, but I'll almost never enjoy handling one. Oh! Jeez! Holy sh! Oh my god! He <laughs> just ripped the rod out of my hand. What is this? That's a freaking gator bluefish, that's what it is. Oh my god. Oh, holy moly. There we go. Oh, what was that? These fish also have such a reputation that you can find pop culture references to them. I think there's a Family Guy episode where Peter and all of his buddies need to kill Daggermouth and Bluefish and collect a reward or something like that. You need 50 grand, Griffin? Well, I got a suggestion for you. Why don't you kill Daggermouth? Maybe I will, Hennessy. You'd be buying yourself a one-way ticket to a watery grave. Daggermouth is the meanest, most ruthless creature that's ever inhabited the sea. There's also an old fisherman's tale I heard as a kid that kind of stuck with me, and I sometimes think of it when I catch bluefish. Uh, apparently this old lady was wearing like really shiny earrings and went swimming, then a bluefish feeding frenzy happened around her and she lost both her earlobes because like they're attracted to the shine. It's probably not true, but it just goes to show you there's a lot of history with these fish. They got a big bad reputation, and there's a lot of stories that come with them too. And one last thing I want to say about bluefish is that they're reputably not that good on the dinner table. Uh, some people rave about smoked bluefish, which I've never tried, but back a couple months ago in the summertime, I actually uh, like gill hooked a bluefish, and instead of wasting the meat, I wanted to put it to the test and see if it's really as bad as people say. So I'm going to cut you back through a few months where I'm filleting the fish and then bring it to the kitchen where I cook it up and eat it. 
All right, man, most of you guys know I am not a fan of these things right here, uh, but earlier I found some activity. Look at that, dude. That's a lot of birds. That's gotta be like 200 birds in there just going crazy. And I was hoping some albies would be mixed in, so I was tossing out a nice epoxy jig with a big old treble hook, and uh, I ended up gill hooking this guy and killing him pretty fast. So I figured, instead of wasting the fish, I'd uh, put it to the test. I've heard mostly bad things about bluefish, but I've heard some people with some good recipes. So I'm gonna fillet them up and see what we can cook up here. All right, haven't really used this bad boy much this season. It's a nice fillet knife though. I think it's a pen brand. And it's funny, I've caught a ton of sea bass and striped bass and delicious fish. And I'm using this on a bluefish, so <laughs> I don't know. Guess I must uh, must have a lot of time on my hands, huh? Just kind of. Let's go right along the spine here. I must say that meat looks whiter than I thought it would. I thought I was gonna cut into this and see just like dark red meat. Knife. All right, so here's filet number one. Ooh, yeah, now that I look at it, this meat is a little dark. I'm gonna take scissors and cut away this crab, but not a bad little filet off this bluefish. And from everything I've read about and people I've talked to and just stuff I've seen online, this is the size bluefish you wanna keep to eat. These are the eaters right here. You don't want those big, nasty gators. Anything, you know, 12 inches or less, like a little snapper blue, those are the bad boys that you wanna keep for eating, or so I'm told. All right, just take scissors quick and cut away this grossness. Also, what the camera did not show is that uh, the second I caught this bluefish, I knew I was gonna keep it. I cut its gills and bled it for a little bit and washed it off in the water. So I think that's also another important step uh, to making bluefish tolerable. I'm really expecting a tolerable meal to come out of this. I don't think I'm gonna enjoy this at all, <laughs> but we'll see. All right, man, so here are my two fillets. Kind of butchered this one a little bit, um, but ah, uh, the meat looks not bad. It's not white flaky meat, obviously. I was kind of expecting it to be darker and bloodier, but I did bleed the fish, so maybe that helped. It doesn't really even smell fishy either. I mean, this is as fresh as it gets, so. Um, but it is bluefish, and they have a reputation for being pretty nasty on the dinner table. But we're gonna cut to the kitchen and uh, see what we can whip up here. All right, well, I got my bluefish fillets here, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, they're starting to look uh, a little dark. So basically what I did, I bled the fish, filleted it right away, washed it, threw it right in the fridge. I didn't throw it in ice water, which I probably should have, but this fish is still really fresh and a little on the dark side. And really the only ingredients you need is salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil, lemon, uh, some mayo, and for the hell of it, threw in an onion. All right, I'm gonna start off, just put a little olive oil in the pan. I don't know, a little dab. I think that's good. As you can see, I got it skin side down on the olive oil. Next, we're just gonna season it. Do a decent amount to mask the inevitable fishiness of this. And that's a good amount of salt. Oh, fancy. Got some pepper on there. Really just eyeballing it. All right, next, I'm gonna get some lemon juice on this fish. Cut in half. It's kind of flying all over the place, but squeeze it right on there. I might need to use the full lemon, I'm thinking. I think the key here is to get as much flavor on this fish to just really mask the gross bluefish taste. I think that's the goal of all these recipes. All right, this recipe also calls for breadcrumbs, which I forgot, but I was able to find this uh, everything but the bagel sesame blend, which is honestly essentially breadcrumbs. So just put a good amount on that. All right, so we're almost ready to throw this bad boy in the oven. The final ingredient we need, believe it or not, is Hellman's mayo. Threw some onions on it, and honestly, even just that makes the presentation look a lot better. So now, we're officially gonna go in the oven. Like I said, it's 350. We're gonna do it for 17 minutes, check on it, and uh, go from there. All right, and here we have final product. Actually, with the mayonnaise on top and the onion, it doesn't look that bad. And the smell, there's absolutely no fishy smell to it, which I was surprised. Half of me thought I was gonna put this in the oven, I was gonna stink up the whole house. But, you know, so far it passes the eye test and the smell test, so 
We'll see how this goes. All right, here we go. I'm actually a little nervous right now. My first time ever eating bluefish in my life. So I cut into it. Oh, here's the skin. I'm gonna kind of eat around the skin, I think. There goes nothing. You know, it's actually not that bad. I think I put enough like between the mayo, breadcrumb, salt and pepper, and lemon. It really disguises the taste. It doesn't have really a lot of fishy flavor to it. Um, I do wish I kind of took the skin off. I actually forgot about that. But other than that, it's actually not that bad. All right, dig into this a little more. So basically, I'm just kind of like taking the top layer off and peeling away the skin. I don't know if the camera picked up. We got a nasty thunderstorm rolling in. Perfect time for a catch and cook video. All right, do another bite. Another bite. No. If I were to scale it, I would give this a B plus, honestly. It's really not that bad. I think, like I said, you put enough stuff on it and if it's really fresh, you can really disguise that like fishy, nasty flavor that bluefish have. So, this has opened my eyes a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually kind of enjoying this. All right, I got my dad here who also shares my uh, hatred for bluefish meat. Uh, he's gonna give it a shot, get his uh, initial reaction. Definitely bluefish, not bad though. Cooked oh, it perfect. Holy. All right, well I'm gonna do something I was pretty convinced I was not gonna do, and that's finish the rest of this bluefish. It's actually really not that bad. Uh, I was expecting to take one bite, be like, yep, that tastes like shit, and throw it right in the garbage. But, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this. I've never really done a video like this before and find it entertaining or informative or whatever. But if you're going to use this recipe, it seemed that uh, 350 degrees, I checked it at 17 minutes. So it was kind of like, eh, wasn't quite there. Gave it another three and it was perfect. The keys to success here was a small bluefish, harvested immediately, as fresh as it gets, put a ton of crap on it, bake it and it's not that bad. And I'm sure there's a million other bluefish recipes out there because just on Instagram, I got like almost 15 recipes sent to me. So let me know what your favorite bluefish recipes are and maybe in the future, more of these videos will be coming out.